if someone could uh, just signal that in the chat, that would be great. Good. Okay, so I can be heard. And now um, we shall start in on this um, uh, entity relationship. Well, I, sorry, um, one, one announcement that is recitation number three, which is exactly on this topic here, has been released. So, so you have that then. Are there any other questions? Uh, you can put them in the chat if you want, or any other issues people want me to, to cover? Okay. Uh, otherwise, we'll just start in on this here, uh, entity relationship, uh, the entity relationship model, also known as the ER model. All right, so um, uh, I think the best thing to do is just to do this by mostly by example. And um, again, just to motivate. So it's, it's called entity relationship modeling. So uh, entity <coughs> relationship uh, modeling. Also called ER modeling. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is a, it's it's one of these things that has stood the test of time. So oh, you know, people a lot of times still people will um, uh, well they'll do something in UML, but it's kind of a similar thing. Uh, but UML has a little bit of a weakness when it comes to doing the relationship part of the modeling, which I'll maybe discuss a little bit. But um, yeah, you'll see people um, you'll see that like uh, people uh, will ask for something like ERD. ERD, so ent entity relationship diagrams. So um, generally speaking, this is what you go through. You go through this process as you're uh, designing the, uh, the database. And it's very much wrapped up in the whole issue of requirements. Uh, so usually there's a lot of uh, stakeholders that are involved in formulation of these ER, di these ER diagrams. And there's kind of lengthy interviews to kind of um, clarify and get it right. You try your best to do it to do it right from the very beginning, but then, of course, you never do it right from the very beginning. So then, there's an issue of you evolve the model. Uh, but a lot of times, you're, what you what you evolve as re, as new requirements come up is not the conceptual model, which is what this is, but rather the representational model. So to start off with, there's just kind of this notion of a conceptual model, conceptual model, and then there is what's called a rep representational model. Okay, so the conceptual model is gonna be like ER diagrams. So these kind of diagrams, and you might even get to a point where um, you have some, you even have more complicated notions of ER diagrams. So you have things like this, this is more real world. We don't really cover this, but it has to do with kind of um, uh, aggregating across uh, conceptual aggregation uh, but anyways, you might come up with some very complicated ER diagram and you might have like is a hierarchies inside of here too. So you have the, the notion that you, this could be something like a vehicle, this could be a boat, and this could be a car, something like that. Anyways, the point is that you, what you do is you work with these things and you know, you have certain, as we will see here, where you have certain things like what, what does it mean for the arrows to be, to be there? Um, uh, different types of arrows you might have, um, uh, what are called weak entity sets. You, there's, we're gonna go over this whole kind of diagrammatic language. The point is that you work with this at the conceptual level. And then at one point here, let's just put it right here. That's a button. At one point we push a button on it, boink. And that then from this right here automatically or semi-automatically, what comes out that is a representational model which are all the table definitions. So like R, uh, a, B, C, um, S, uh, A, D, E, uh, and then et cetera, et cetera, including the primary keys and including potentially foreign keys, okay? So the point is that, that you have a conceptual model, which is this diagram model uh, where you've talked with the stakeholders and you, you, know, you go through these kind of long, arduous kind of uh, querying them and figure out, well, exactly how do things fit together in the conceptual model? Once you're done with that, then you push a button on it and then out plops the actual table definitions. And that's what's called representational model. 
if you want to continue on, it's not really going to be covered here, but we have the notion of a physical model. And that's like, say, per the particular um, uh, database, like the particular binary files that may be in like PostgreSQL. Okay, some, you know, this is, this is the actual physically kind of what, th these are just table definitions. And these table definitions could go into MySQL, they could go into PostgreSQL, whatever it might be. But then of course, if you go take it to, the, to its full conclusion, then you have the actual physical, you know, state of the database, which is gonna be, be based on which database system you're using. So this whole hierarchy of going from a conceptual model to a representational model and then to a physical model, that this is kind of the, the main um, way that we're gonna kind of view different levels at which we can talk about the database. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Um, so as I said before, you wanna work here, you wanna get this right to, to whatever extent you can, but you'll never get it completely right. Uh, and then usually what happens in the real world is that this, once you have pushed a button on this, what people work with, they might keep around these diagrams, but what they work with is they work with the actual representational model. So as things are being evolved, you know, as requirements change and all that, they're doing it over the tables. And that's where it becomes more of a exercise of the, of the technical. So what, what can happen if you do a bad job here and then you get to this, and then this is kind of not good enough. And then the real world makes it so it changes a lot. This thing can drift into a really nasty state. And that's, um, and you know, that's, that, that has caused the loss of money, uh, many units of currency and many, and also lives. I mean, you know, they're, when these things screw up, I mean, it can be, it can have um, real consequences. So we, we want to get this right, or we want to do the best job we can with this right here. So that's kind of the motivation of this ER uh, model. All right, so let's, um, let's again review this. Okay, so let's just try to do this from an, as an example. And let's just think about that recipe database I was talking about. So we have, we have the notion of, um, we'll start out with this. Uh, one sec, let me just stick with this here. Uh, so we have the notion of what's an entity, what's called an entity or an entity set, if you want to get technical about it. And that would be something like uh, food. And then we would have recipe. Okay, so these are both kind of nouns, but they're entities or entity sets. So we're going to have a set of recipes and we're going to have a set of foods. And what links them together is a relationship, which is denoted by uh, the diamond. And this basically says a food is in a recipe and a recipe contains a food. Okay, so food is in a recipe and a recipe contains a food. All right, and then we might have also um, something like this. We might have, have a home and a home has as inventory a food. So food um, uh, in inventory for a home and a home has a food. Okay, so these are, these are, we're just getting the kind of the names working both ways. So I hope that's clear. Uh, and finally, uh, we have the notion of uh, can make. So a home can make a recipe and then a recipe can be cooked at, can be or made at a home. Okay, so that this right here that that shows us just as an example. So so these what these are these are the relationships. Uh, so this is a relationship between recipe and home. Okay, and let's just just to, for us to put in a new one here. Let's say that a home that and every home has a favorite. This kind of little silly here, but it has a favorite recipe. So um, uh, favorite. Recipe favorite of. Sorry for the. No, anyways. Hope you see that. So it's, this is favor. Okay. Now here's where it's important to kind of this. This is actually going to wind up being. So we have you know one distinguished recipe that's the favorite of that um, of that home, and this is where we're actually going to wind up getting bringing in. These are all many to many. This is a many to many. So you can have many recipes that are made at many different homes. You know you can have a, one recipe. Can be made at many different homes. So 
the recipe for making macaroni and cheese, well, there are many homes that can make that recipe, all right? And then for any particular home, um, so, so basically what that means, it means that there's, a, there's um, we have many to one, and then we, so, we, so many recipes can be made at a, at a particular home, and a particular home uh, can make many recipes. So what that means is this is gonna be many, this is a many to many relationship, okay? Because you can many homes, so you, many to many, so you, you basically have two types of relations. You have three different types of relationships. You have many to many. You have many to one. You have one to many. And you have one to one. OK. So these are the these are the, the the you know many to one and one to many are kind of the same thing. It just depends on which which way you're reading it. Uh, so when we talk right here, when we say a home, now we're talking about favorite here. Let me just call this fave so you can see it. Okay, this is fave. Okay, a home can have one home can have okay can have um, a single home can have many recipes. Is that true? As favorites? No. Can only have one. So if given a home, so if you if you just grab any home, right, any particular home, um, then uh, that will determine a favorite recipe. Okay, and that's why what we do here to, to signal this this um, many to one to sig to signal this many to one. So. I mean, the, the, you know, it's kind of the question might be like, well, why do you say many? Why do you say one? So it's a little bit confusing, but let's just kind of, let's just go through this painstakingly so we can kind of get it intuitive. All right. Um, if I say that, basically, if I grab any home, any particular home, then that will determine uh, a particular favorite recipe. Now, let's say that there are many homes that have, uh, that have macaroni and cheese as their favorite recipe. All right. That means that there are going to be many homes that point to macaroni and cheese. So it's a many to one relationship, all right? That's why, that's where you get the many to one. Now, a particular recipe here can have many, so if you take like macaroni and cheese, it can have many homes, all right? So I just hope that, that people see that, 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 that when you talk about this relationship, it's many homes to one recipe. So that's the many to one. It's not one recipe, um, uh, it's, it's not many recipes to one home, that's, it won't be that, right? Many recipes through favorite, many recipes will not, um, there aren't gonna be several recipes that are the favorite. There's only a single favorite. Okay, so I hope that makes it, that, that's, that's clear to people. All right, so let's make a little, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, some of the notation here also because there's two different types of arrows. There's an arrow that's like that, and there's an arrow that's like that. Okay, so it's kind of silly, but it's like that this is rounded. Right. So that's this is pointy point, and this is rounded here. All right. So what this shows is this shows this what this signifies is a total participation, and this is a partial participation. So this is total. So when it's rounded, it means it's total. And so what that means then is it means since this right here is, is representing partial. What this means then is it means that there might be a home in which we don't have a favorite recipe, okay? So partial just simply means that, yes, it, certainly if there is a favorite recipe of a home, it's, there's only gonna be one of them, but there can be null, there can be no favorite recipes specified. That's what that means right there when you have that as a, as a pointy. Now, if we say, no, no, we want it so that every home must have a favorite recipe, then what we do is we just soften this thing up. So now it's rounded. Okay. So I hope that's clear for people. All right. So now one thing that you'll see if you go out to the net is that there's a lot of alternatives. So it, there's a lot of alternative notations that have been developed. This one that I that I've picked here is kind of the simplest one. It's just kind of it's it's very direct. It's kind of I think the classical one. But of course, as 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 you can imagine, 
with any of these kind of diagrammatic languages, uh, you know, people might might start kind of inventing new ways in which they want to, you know, they, they it's since since strictly speaking, I mean, there's no there's nothing that says I can't start doing kind of weird things and like say, oh, I'm going to put like I me mean, just even this right here, even this having it so in the forward direction and the backward direction, that actually isn't so standard. Usually they, you just have to pick one of them. And then you, when you read the diagram, you figure out which one. But I think it's kind of nice to have the backward direction too, because it makes the whole thing more, more linguistic, right? But um, so in other words, you can read off recipe can be made at home. Home can make recipe. So it's kind of nicer kind of to keep, to keep this kind of closer to, to this kind of uh, verb and noun orientation. Okay, so I hope that's clear for people. All right, now there's one thing that we haven't been showing here. Um, all right, so anyways, uh, let, maybe just these are the relationships. So we have many to many. So if we talk about a many to many, then we can say that, well, there are many foods, right? If, if I can take, if I have a single recipe, it can have many foods, right? And if I have a single food, it can be in many recipes. So you're getting many to many on both sides. So the the just think that there's many foods that can, that can be inside of many recipes. There's many recipes that can have many foods. So if you just think of an example, you'd say something like cheese is in macaroni and cheese and cheese is also in um, say uh, uh, chicken Parmesan. And then likewise, chicken Parmesan has cheese and chicken Parmesan has tomato. So, so or tomato sauce or crushed tomatoes. So um, you basically have uh, this being a many to many uh, relationship, all right? Um, now one to ones, one to ones come up actually. Um, so one one to one. So you might have something like this. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, you might have something like this. You might have something like um, uh, nutrition info. So nutrition info. So nutrition info is kind of like oh, that doesn't come up so well. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm not going to mess with it. This is why I wish I had a real document camera rather than this rigged up thing. Anyways, um, all right. So you have nutrition info, uh, which is like the number of calories, and you know it's coming from some kind of authority. And um, let's say that what we have is we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the nutrition info and the food. So basically, what it says it says that. But let's let's just just to say one thing, that is that we want to have it so that um, not every food. We don't want to have it so that we have to have every food has to have nutritional information, but every bit of nutritional information had better have a corresponding food. So we can actually specify that with the pointed arrow, with the rounded arrows and the pointed arrows. So you see this right here, but that means that it means that this could be potentially be partial in that direction. So in other words, we could have a food where there was no nutritional information, but if we have nutritional information, we want to have it so that it corresponds to a specific food in our database. All righty, right? Okay, so that, and th this, this again shows a one-to-one -one, um, uh, relationship. Um, okay, so we've got, we, you know, we were representing each of the different type of relationship um, relationships in this particular diagram here. Now, what are we missing? What we're missing is we're missing the attributes and it's gonna be really kind of um, not so pleasant, but let me just do it. I'll put, maybe I'll do it in a different color so, so we can see it a little bit easier. I'll do it in blue, maybe. Um, okay, so I'll basically give each food an ID, okay? And I'll give it a name as well, all right? So with ID, name, I hope people can read that. Um, anyways, and then likewise with a recipe here, I'll give it an ID and, um, I'll give it a name and I'll give it, let's say something like this, like a, um, uh, why don't we say like uh, time. So like that's, this time here is like the cooking time. All right. And we might also, okay, so that, so uh, I hope that's clear. So this is like the, the, like maybe chicken Parmesan takes 35 minutes or something. So that's like 35 minutes, that's chicken Parmesan. And this could be ID 44.99 for the chicken Parmesan recipe. Uh, likewise, home, let's give home an ID and let's give home a, an address. Okay. So is that clear for everybody? Uh, okay. 
Um, all right, so now we have this. So, so now, you know, this is, it's, it's a really simple model, but, um, uh, but now we can, um, hmm. now what we can do is now we can, let me just bring this out here so that people can. So let's say that we've gone and we've discussed this and, you know, but of course in any real world situation, like if we were like doing a database for the hospital or something, or even if we were doing a database for like an e-commerce application where we have customers, we have orders, um, we have products, we have like delivery times, we, you know, th this kind of thing. I mean, it's going to be more complicated than this. All right. But, um, but this, this is the, kind of like a simple kind of get, you know, getting started kind of, um, kind of model. Okay. So let me just do this as an example here. I'm not really a great artist here. Let's see that that's a button and boink. We're going to push a button on this thing. All right, we're pushing a button on this model here. And then what we want is we, this, what we're, what, what's gonna happen here actually is unambiguously, we're gonna, so this will not be, this will not actually require any design. Uh, there's no kind of um, semi-automated aspect to this. When I push this button, we're gonna plop out a set of table definitions. All right, they're just gonna plop out of this thing. All right, so let's, um, let's push a button on this thing. Let me just uh, get ready here, one sec. All right. So when we push a button on it, what do we do? What is the, um, uh, I'm kind of skipping ahead here because in the slides you'll see, uh, I, but I want to kind of get to this right away so that we, um, uh, uh, I want to get to this right away so that we can kind of, um, kind of get, get a complete story and get kind of a complete intuition as to why this stuff is useful. Because this is quite useful. All right, so we push the button. Now, how am I going to do this? All right, I'm going to do it the following way. All right, so first step, the very first step you're going to do is you're going to go to all your entity sets. So how many entity sets do we have here? What are the entity sets we have? Uh, we have nutrition info, we have food, we have home, we have uh, recipe, right? And what we're going to do is for each of those, for each of those, we're going to start a table definition. We're going to, notice we're going to start a table definition. So uh, food, uh, recipe, recipe, uh, nutrition info, nutrition info. By the way, just to just to make one thing clear, I mean I don't know what is, is this? What is this called? Snake case or something? I can't remember what it's called. Um, this is, I, I would, I mean, this is, I mean, this is just a pet peeve of mine, I guess, but in, in databases, I think it's good to kind of name your relations when you, using the underscore between words, try to keep things, try to keep things as linguistic as possible. Because again, when people have to work with this later, they're gonna have to kind of try to figure out what it was representing, right? You know, you want to keep things as linguistic as possible. And since, um, since SQL is case insensitive, camel case makes no sense. You don't want to use camel case. Um, so, and you'd still kind of like to separate out the full title. So use underscore. Uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good practice. Also, I tend to kind of, it also as a good, another, as a good, another kind of good kind of hygienic uh, practice, try to keep these singular, the singular form of the noun, right? And likewise, it'll be, these will be singular form of the noun. Um, yeah. Okay. That's just, um, and I usually just make them so they capitalize, you know, first letter capitalized. And then underscores here. All right. Uh, then uh, I typically will then make it lowercase on the um, on the uh, attributes. But let's say I'm getting a little ahead of myself. All right. Then we have home also. Okay. So there we have that. So now what you want to do is now you what you want to do is you want to include all of the um, the, the the attributes, especially the key attributes. So we have food, uh, and then we have name. Um, and I didn't really show here, but let's just, let's just say right here, I have, uh, nutrition info. So that has an ID as well. And it also has a, um, uh, let's say calories, the number of calories. Okay. 
So uh, how are we gonna do it? So we, we're just, all we're doing now is we're just going, you know, pushing this button here, uh, where all we're doing now is we're just, the very first step is we just go and we collect up all the, um, the entities. So, and we start the, the relation definitions. So I have, let me just finish this up here. I have ID here. And then I have name. And then I have time. Okay, uh, nutrition info, I have ID and I have calories. Okay, uh, on home, I have um, uh, ID and address. Okay, so that's it. So, so, so we've started, that, that, that was our first step. The very first step, maybe I can even say this right here. The first step is to, um, I'm not sure if that's gonna fit. Uh, I'll put it over here. Step one, um, entity sets uh, to relations. Okay, step one is the entity sets to the relations. Now, uh, relations, not relationships. So a lot of times when people talk about these things, you wanna keep a relationship is, when you talk about relationship, you're talking about the ER model. When you talk about relation, you're talking about the representational model. Okay, so uh, what's the next step then? All right, so um, what we do now is we take all of our many-to-many -many relationships. Um, We take all of our many-to-many -many relationships. So how many relate? How many many-to-many -many relationships do we have? Um, we have one, two, uh, three. Notice this is not. I'm sorry. Did I say that one? We have one, two, three. Those are our many-to-many -many relationships. So step two is many-to-many. Uh, to relations. Okay, so how do we do that? So the way we do that, these are the these are all the many to many's. What we do is we say so this one here. I'll just call this in, or let's say I'll call, I'll call it contains because it's a little, a little more informative. So we have contains, uh, and it doesn't have any attributes, right? It doesn't have any attributes. But I can let me just give it an attribute just just so that we say. Um, I'll just call this amount. Okay, that's this is not really so that it, I put an attribute. You can put attributes on the relationships as well. So I'm going to say amount. So that's like saying something like um, let's say it's just like a text descriptor. So it would be something like um, 30 grams or I'm sorry, uh, 350 grams of chicken in, par in chicken par parmesan. Okay, for one serving or something. Um, so this, that's, that's the amount there. So what we, we actually do include the attributes here as well. So amount, all right? And then um, now we have, I'll say this is can make, can make, all right? And then I'll call this as inventory or uh, uh, inventory. Inventory of. I don't like to use a noun uh, for this kind of thing. Sorry, I don't like to use a noun. I used to. Uh, this is in, this is kind of a um, a phrase here. So I, you know, uh, the nouns are kind of more for the the uh, entities. That's just kind of a. It's just a practice. But the thing is that the way you name things is actually really important, especially when it comes to modeling stuff, because someone has to understand this later. All right, so you basically, the first thing you, you just basically put in their attributes. So the only one that had an attribute was that one. And now here's the key thing is that what you do is all the entities that are participating, that are participating in the relationship, you go to their key, okay? You go to their actual um, primary key and you include those in the relationship. So, and then you also do that as a foreign key. So let's just show here what's gonna happen. So let's look at the um, contains. It has two entity. Now, if there were three entities, um, then we would do this for all three. 
uh, and we'll come, we'll do some examples that have three entities later. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do it with, uh, with two entities. So uh, we have food and we have recipe. Those are the two participating entities uh, in this relationship. And they have, um, there's a, they, they has an ID and an ID here for the, um, for the uh, uh, primary keys. Now, what we can do is just to kind of keep them distinguished. So th this one's going to actually migrate into this, um, uh, into this relation. So we'll, we'll just basically call it a lot, a lot of times what a good, a good uh, way to do this. I'll just, I'll, I'll do it this way just to keep things kind of clear. I'll say food ID, food ID, and then recipe ID, uh, recipe ID. All right, so let's just, let's just be clear right here. Uh, there it is right there. And uh, th there's an ambiguity here because we have ID named here. So we don't want to say ID ID because then we would lose kind of what the, um, what the meaning was. So we'll just kind of give it a name. So you have the kind of ID. So you just maybe concatenate the name of the entity with the name of the, um, with the name of the attribute if there's kind of a collision. So anyways, but the important point here is that this right here then winds up becoming a foreign key. And this winds up becoming a foreign key, right? So, uh, so this is also, we're, we're getting the foreign keys that are kind of getting baked into this thing. All right. Very good. Okay. Um, now we're going to do the same thing with um, can make. So can make has uh, the, the idea of the home and the idea of the recipe. So that will be, and then this can make has no other attribute. So basically we're going to say, um, uh, that has, let's say, the home ID, and it has the recipe ID. All right, so um, home ID, and the recipe ID, okay, clear enough? All right, and then I guess we have a last one to do, that is the inventory of, and inventory of, we just kind of think, it, I mean, I could add, oh, not good. Inventory of. I could add in like in the inventory. I could have in that. Let's just do this amount. Okay. How much do we have in inventory? Um, so the food has like you know 100 and uh, well 1,200 grams of chicken. Uh, so inventory that would be then amount, and then it will be a food uh, ID and. Home ID, uh, food ID, then it's going to go, and then home ID is going to go. Okay. So, um, okay, so that takes care then of the um, that took that took care of all the many-to-many -many relationships. All right. Now we're going to do um, the. Uh, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, uh, one to many's. Okay, so the one to many's and those are going to go to foreign keys. Okay, so one to many uh, relationships. So one to many. We only have one of them. It's this fave here. Those actually don't become their own tables. They become foreign keys. All right. Oh. In this example, won't food to recipe be one to many? Um, uh, food to recipe. So let's let's. That's a good question. I want. I want to. Let's. I want to explore. Since the food recipe. All right. So. Food. Chicken. So that's one. We're going to grab one food. It's called chicken. Chicken can be in many recipes. Right. So you would figure that's one to many. Okay. But likewise, a recipe, you know, I grab one recipe. It can map to many foods. So it can have like chicken in it. It can have uh, rice in it. It can have tomato in it. So when you, once you can do it both ways, that, may, that makes it a many to many. Okay, if you grab one chicken ent uh, entry, 
of the food table. Yeah, it will have one ID to the rest of it. Um, I think what you mean then is that you mean if you look at the relationship relation, the contain, this right here. So we have, so any tuple here, you're going to have something like chicken and you're going to have chicken parmesan. And then you're going to have an amount. That's just going to be one, every single tuple is just going to be one statement there. But, um, but it doesn't mean that you can't have another one where you have chicken again, and then you have a different recipe other than chicken parmesan as, a, as the next tuple. Likewise, you can have chicken parmesan with having chicken, and you can have chicken parmesan having tomato sauce. I mean, the thing is that all of these, there's no sets. I mean, th these are all single atomic um, tuples only have one, one um, uh, each tuple only has one value for each, um, for each attribute. That's what, that's, that, that's kind of what the, the relational database, that's, that's kind of what we're stuck with and it just everything's ta tabular. Actually, there's a technical term for that. It's called first normal form. And we're, we're going to cover that pretty soon. But it basically just means that all the attribute values are atomic. So that they're not sets or anything. But I'm not really sure if that was what the question was. But if people have, I mean, I think it's, it's really, it's good to air the questions here to kind of clarify. But hopefully things are staying simple enough so people kind of can accept everything I've done. I don't think I've made any mistakes here. All right, so let's let's go let's let's go to the, let's let's deal with this favorite a home having a favorite recipe. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. Chicken will have. I mean, there's only going to be one. I mean, you, in principle, you could have two. You could have duplicate names here. I haven't even gone into that issue. I mean, we wouldn't like that. We want to have chicken. We only want, we would like to have, we have an ID because we want to keep things kind of, um, when we represent things in the tables, we want to have them as kind of something kind of more concrete than a name. Um, but but if I, let's say that I make this a primary key and then I make this unique. So in other words, we only have chicken. There's only one, we don't have two foods both named chicken. Chicken is unique and that is that, it, well, there's only going to be one ID for chicken. All right, I'm not, I'm not sure if that, that helps. I mean, one of the things here also just to keep in mind here is that when we do this, we're, we're, we still, this isn't quite SQL yet. We haven't gotten to quite to SQL, but we could. We're getting very close to SQL. But um, when we do that, I could sit there, when I do actually define food as a table, I could also put in an, an extra condition saying, I want this to be unique. I want the name to be unique so that we don't have like, Two tuples in food. One is forty-five seventy-one, and it has chicken. Another one is ninety-nine forty-four, and it also has the name chicken. I don't want that. So I could actually go back here, and I could say like, well, I'm not going to do this, but I could say that if I put like a little squiggly, I put a little squiggly underneath the name here, that means it's unique. I, I'm not. I don't want to do that <laughs> because I don't want to have because I don't want to invent notation. Okay, yeah, but. Okay, I'm going to follow up on the question. Um, no, I, th this is a really good question. And I want to kind of, I want to, I'm definitely going to answer this question that, 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 that's being posed here because we really want to kind of get to the bottom of this. Um, I'll do that as a separate thing. Once I finish doing the, we're still, we're still going to still pound this thing out and then I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to follow up on this because I think it's really important to, for, for us to follow up on this. Uh... Yeah, let me get to one to ones in a second. Uh, no, we don't have to actually, technically speaking, we do not have to have the same arrow uh, on the, um, going in both directions on a one to one. Uh, there's no, I mean, there's really, uh, it's, it, no, we don't. I mean, it, we'll, we'll see later on if, we, if, if that'll, Causes troubles, but we'll we'll see. We'll we'll we'll, um, uh, we'll deal with the one to one. Okay, okay. So, anyways, um, one to many's. Okay, so one to many's are going to actually become foreign keys. So what we have here is we have a home. So the so the issue is that is that okay. If I say it's going to become a foreign key, then there's two possibilities. Either we're going to have 
the favorite is going to migrate to as an attribute on home, or it's going to be an attribute on recipe. All right. And if you think about it, it should be on home. All right. So let's, but let's, okay, favorite. So you're going to pick the many side of the many to one, and you're going to have it so that it, it migrates there. And favorite, favorite, what? Favorite recipe. So it becomes a foreign key. So favorite now is pointing to recipe, right? And that makes sense if you think about it, because you have a home which has an address and it also has a favorite recipe, okay? Now, since I think right here, all right, it's, it, now it's, it's rounded, so it means it has to be total. What that basically means, it means that right here, there's a further constraint here, which is, which is hard to kind of write, but you can write it in SQL. It's very easy to write it in SQL. I, didn't, I really wish I didn't do that. I want to do it with a different, this is not an arrow, it's just a pointer. And you want to somehow say, um, not null. Okay. So the not null, that's kind of a, that's somehow being annotated over favorite. Okay. So um, that's dealing with the one to the, the, um, the one to many is a, relationships. So now the last step we want to do, deal with is the um, uh, is the one-to-ones. So how are we going to deal with this one-to-one? -one? All right, so step three and then step four. One, two, ones. All right, so on the one-to-ones, um, what we can do is we can simply do a merge merge relations. Okay, so what's gonna happen then is I'm just gonna merge these two together, all right? And I'll keep food as the one here. So what we'll do is we'll wind up doing a, um, uh, I mean, you don't actually, you can do it as foreign keys if you want, if, if you want to as well. Um, you actually have a choice here when it comes to this, um, but let's just go ahead and uh, merge merge them. So as we merge them, we're going to basically just merge. Uh, we're basically, what we're, we're, we're since these IDs here are over the same uh, universe, we're just basically going to say calories here. Uh, okay, and then we can get rid of this. Okay, so then we can drop that table. All right, now we could have also had it so that we have a foreign key from. We can keep this table here and have a foreign key that goes into food and then a foreign key that, that likewise goes back right so we could we could we could basically break this into basically um, uh, putting them either way we're not going to have this as a table but we could have we could represent this as foreign keys as well all right so uh, typically this doesn't happen so often but if it does um, oh, it's kind of um, it all depends on kind of what the source how how this actually happened and I mean now you're getting into kind of more practical practicality issues so it might be that we have nutrition information we have package information we have um, uh, like uh, environmental impact information on different foods and we all those are coming in as separate tables on a scrape or something and that we want to just kind of keep them as separate tables and not merge them in that's quite possible uh, but uh, but that becomes kind of a more of a practical issue. I just wanted to have a one-to-one -to, -one to show it. So in this case here, the simple thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna merge them together. Okay, so they just got merged into one. All right, so now we have this. So I hope that's kind of clear, at least somewhat clear. Uh, we have, uh, from this, this model here, we pushed a button on it. And aside from the issue of one-to-ones and some, some question about, well, how are we gonna deal with that? Are we gonna deal with it as foreign keys? Or are we gonna deal with merging the relations? Um, uh, well, aside from that, uh, we have an unambiguous way of moving from one of these to a representation model, which are the set of tables. All right, now, um, so let's, what we'll, what we'll do after the break is I just want to like clean this up a little bit. And so then maybe go in and answer what was, came, what was brought up in the chat. But just assume now that once you have this, now you can start working with the database, All right? So the, 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 um, the idea now is what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go back and there's some things we missed. So there's some things we didn't cover yet. So like uh, some additional things in ER, but I just wanted to kind of get this basic intuition down about how these kind of translations happen. Because what I've shown you here is pretty much practically kind of what you need to know 
to work with these things in the cold real world. But there's a, there's a couple of little other things I'll just add in the next like in the in the next uh, next hour. Okay, so based on that, why don't we take our break then, and we'll get back and people can put more questions in the chat if they they want me to clear things up. Um, but I'll just pause the, the recording now, and then we'll be back at 15 after 11. All right, so um, I hope everybody can hear me. I'm sure they, I'm assuming they can. Uh, this was to address a question that came up, which I think is a good question. So um, let's just look at this example here. Uh, just to kind of to food, um, many to many recipe. And then of course, what plops out of this is the food recipe and uh, uh, contains here, food contains in, in a certain amount. So here's an instance, a database instance. So these are in the tables actually. So this is actually in the database. So we have tomato and we have chicken. Those are both two foods. Uh, and then we have recipe of chicken parmesan and California avi sandwich, avocado sandwich. Um, and uh, this is what's, these are some of the tuples that are in contains. So what this, what this shows you then is it shows you then that um, I can record the fact that the tomato is inside of the chicken parmesan and also that tomato is inside the avocado sandwich. And likewise, um, well, the other ones too. Uh, oops. Let's see, I got a little problem here. A little mistake there. Uh, that, um, that, that, that chicken is in the um, avocado sandwich and uh, Yeah, so it's basically, chicken is in, chicken can be in both an avocado sandwich, uh, both in chicken parmesan and avocado sandwich. And likewise, an avocado sandwich can have two, um, can both have tomato and chicken uh, as, as ingredients. All right, so that, that's, this shows you how, how the many to many gets represented uh, in the tables. Let's see here, I got another question coming in. Exactly. Yeah. So that it, the contains tables is what plops out of pushing the button. So that's how it happens. So good. So, but I'm glad that, that you asked because it, it, it um, generally speaking, um, when you have a question, it's other people have the same question, but uh, kudos to the person who has the courage to ask. All right. Um, there's another question about having, so there's a lot of alternative notations, a lot of al alternative notations. Um, so you'll have stuff like, let me do this in red here. You'll have stuff like people put like ends on this right here, where you'll see people like put stars here. You'll see like double lines. You'll see you know a whole bunch of other stuff. And I just want to we're going to stay away from those, those those alternative notations. You'll find them on the on the net. There and then and then of course you know the max min uh, notations. And then somebody says, well, then there's it becomes this whole argument. Well, what happens when are you put it on what side do you put it on, etc. I find the error notation to be the most intuitive and we're just gonna stick with that. That's the classic uh, way of doing it. Um, uh, but there's a lot of alternatives. Uh, generally speaking, you um, you go through, uh, I mean, there's a tool out there if people really wanted to kind of do this. I mean, the real tool, I'm not really sure what the status of the tool is right now, but it used to be very popular, uh, Irwin. All right, so <laughs> Irwin is a um, kind of was like the, the leading uh, diagrammatic or the ER software package, you know, several years ago at least. Um, so people wanted to see that. So, um, so there, I want to make two two points here just to kind of um, make things a little bit clear. So, so one thing is that we did this. We we hit the button and we spelled everything out to tables. But if we look at this, can make uh, can be made at actually. So that so that that's fine. You know, a home can make a certain recipe. But notice how that is basically derived. This is a derived uh, relation. So you should actually be able to compute this relation from the other ones, right? By basically doing, you actually wind up doing an every uh, or a, a double not exists. So when we talk about views, and some of these can actually be views. Um, so the reason why something you can make something is because because the foods that are in the recipe you have in sufficient quantity uh, in the inventory. That's when a, a home can make the recipe, all right? So these are, some of these are wind up actually being views when it comes down to actually implementing them in the database, all right? Okay, um, and then another thing I wanted to say, just it's kind of a point that, that it's, I mean, I'm not, I don't wanna belabor it too much because it's kind of outside my purview or outside the purview of this course. But when you go and you, you're working, 
and you are talking to people. So, so a lot of times there's a lot of like, this is why I said that it takes certain, a certain amount of people skills to actually do these things. Because one of the problems is when you get into a complicated model, you know, you're the database person and you've got to actually make, you have to get this thing to a specific uh, state. You have to, you, you have to, be, you have to um, make things very concrete. And a lot of times you're dealing with like the stakeholders, like let's say the big manager or somebody um, who's um, has a lot of authority and they don't like to get um, questions that make them, they, they, they certainly don't like to get questions that make them look stupid. So for instance, you have like the big manager type and then you ask the big manager type, well, you know, it's some, maybe some really complicated thing with an order or something. And you say, well, can a, can a customer initiate two order? Can, can a cu customer, customer have a canceled order that, um, and then um, can a canceled order initiate a uh, delivery sequence or something like that? So you, you wind up asking like really these very intricate questions. And it's really a bad sign in an organization if they kind of look at you like, you know, who are you like little pissant computer science person? Why are you asking us these inane questions about how, how our operations work? And they almost become offended because you're really trying to dig into the details. That's a bad sign. And that's the, a lot of times that's the reason why things screw up because they don't, because this is really, it's, it's, it's more difficult than people think to kind of get the model right. And a lot of people get very impatient and very impatient when you start asking them very, very probing questions about the exact thing they want to represent. Because it can, can make them kind of look stupid when they don't really know, actually. So it's a good test of kind of the, a culture uh, to see whether or not they're going to go through this well. Um, again, the devil is in the details. So if they don't do it right, I mean, if they don't really kind of think about their model, then they're, they're definitely, as the old saying goes, they're definitely cruising for a bruising. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but then again, at the same time, be tactful because you, if you know that you can ask them a question, you can ask them a question in a more tactful way so they don't look stupid, right? Because, you know, who wants to look stupid? Um, yeah, but certain people have certain tolerance about looking stupid. Some people really do not want to look stupid. So, but I mean, there's another thing also, and that is that don't, you know, sometimes just kind of not ask like a really, really detailed. So you can be, you can, you can be a pissant by asking really, really obvious questions. So it's very much an art. So, you know, you, you ask a very, very obvious question and you lose your credibility because they say, well, yeah, of course a customer is going to have, um, you know, can have more than one address. And they look at you like kind of, what are you, dumb? I mean, so what I mean, oh, you're asking an obvious question. So it's a kind of an art to kind of figure out how you deal with it. But there's a lot of social problems. There's a lot of social issues in navigating and getting the model right. Because this takes a lot of effort to get it right. And a lot of issues will come up in the, in the discussion with the stakeholders. So be sensitive to that. Um, but definitely, um, if they really don't want to answer questions, and they think it's beneath them to kind of answer detailed questions, that is a terrible, terrible sign <laughs> for their operations. They're going to be in trouble, most likely. OK, uh, Okay. now let's go on and let's, let's talk about some of the more kind of, um, uh, you know, some of the things that we kind of skipped over a little bit in, um, in this. So there's. Um, one thing uh, that we didn't talk about uh, yet is um, there's an issue of roles. Let's see, what do we have? I'll just kind of, have, okay. We have an idea of um, weak entities. Weak entities. All right. And then we're going to also, we're going to cover um, roles. And then we're also going to cover um, weak entities, roles. And then we're going to talk about ISA. Okay, so the class hierarchies essentially. All right, so weak entities. Um, a weak entity is an entity that um, that that depends on its existence by uh, its existence is dependent on another and on a strong entity uh, being present. Okay, so let's let's just um, uh, let me just get to here so I can one second. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Huh. 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 That's kind of annoying. Where did I put it? Sorry, guys. Talk about somebody looking stupid. Uh hmm. Ah, anyways, I'll just do it. Okay. Uh, I can't find this. This is silly. Okay, so weak entity is an entity uh set or an entity. Um, we kind of run these together. Uh, that depends on its existence for another. So for instance, we might have something like this. We might have something like this. We might have a person 
And then we might have a weak entity pet. All right. So we have a person, and the person has, like, let's say, for instance, they have a personal number, or we'll say a number and a name. Okay. The numbers. Okay. And then the pet has just like, let's say, let's say that we'll keep it simple here. We have, say, the name and the type. Okay. So I have, I'm a person. So I'm a strong entity. So, so basically, I can I can be represented in this database independent of um, just as an independent uh, uh, entity, right? A, a floating person without any other connection to anything. I can I can exist in the database that way with a name. Um, however, a pet. So a pet like Fido the dog. Really, only, it, it, its existence. So right there, I, I did. That's what's called a partial key. So we have Fido, the dog, is um, uh, you know is based on its um, its uh, its existence. It needs an owner. It needs a person that's going to own it. Otherwise, it makes no sense. You won't you won't have a pet that just is out there floating. All pets, like Fido, like Rover, um, they have a an owner. Okay, so um, uh, so. When you translate this out to, to, to tables, what you wind up doing is you wind up, they both are going to be their own tables. But what you wind up doing, uh, and you can give this a name so it has, person has a pet. Um, what you wind up doing when you push the button on this thing is what you, is you propagate the key of the, um, of the, uh, of owning entity uh, down into uh, the, the a table for the weak entity. Uh, so that it winds up being a full, um, so it winds up having a full, uh, a full. Name. So basically, the way this would work is this: you have a okay, person, uh, number, name, right, and then you have pet, and then the pet, then this this key, the the, the key of the owner propagates down in, in down into here when you're actually turning it into tables. So then you have number. And then you have name, and then you have type. And sorry, that's the full key there. And then this winds it, and then this just right here becomes a foreign key. Okay, number goes to there. That's the full key across there. Um, that's how you deal with what are called weak entities, All right? Um, these can, and it'll it'll come up. You can have it. Uh, take away the name here, a person, uh, whatever that is. I, I'm not sure, but the thing is, you can have two of them. And this comes up in your recitation. You can have two uh, owning entities, right? So you have owner one, or you have, um, you know, I'll just call this A, I'll call this B. And then this right here has a um, uh, ID. Uh, and this it has a number that has ID. In this case here, when you, when you spell this out or when you push a button on this and you turn this into a table, you're gonna have to have both of the uh, owners because there's two, two owning, um, uh, there's two owning entities, um, and both IDs are going to have to propagate into the table. So you would wind up also having ID here, and that would then point out for whatever B is. Okay, so I hope that's clear. That 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 um, that you have to form a full a full key based on the owning entities' um, uh, keys. Okay. Uh, this, you know, this really hardly ever happens that you have two of these, but but I just thought I'd bring it up because in recitation, uh, it, it happened. Okay, uh, right. Um, so why does this actually happen? Uh, the reason why this happens is because most of the time it has, the, why does this happen in the real world? Why do you actually have weak entities? And most of the time it's because you don't, is it, it has to do with who has the authority to give IDs to something. So like if you say something like, hmm, like if you talk about players on a team, let's say that you have like these different teams and you have players on the team and each player has a number. A player then winds up becoming a weak entity set because you can't have a global ID space that's going to go over all different uh, players. Just like this. I mean, think of it this way. When we come back to the pet example, um, maybe in Sweden, actually, I don't know. Do people register pets in Sweden? 
I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> Does a pet get a number? Um, uh, actually, maybe somebody answered that. I don't think. I mean, I. I all right. Does it? Let's see here. They do? Pets get numbers? So a pet has a persona, or a pet number. Let's say that we're in a society where you can't give a number to a pet. Actually, let me see here. Um, then in that case, the, how do you identify the pet? I mean, because you don't have the right to, not the right, but you don't have the practice. It's not practical for you to, to go out and then start issuing like pet IDs to every single pet. So the way you do it instead, if you want to identify a pet, is you use the is you use the person's number, you know, the person's uh, who the owner's number plus the name of the pet. All right. So if I have Fido and I have Spot, then I, you can identify. Uh, okay. So I think the thing is, yeah. Then then the question is that how? I, I mean, maybe the way it is that that unfortunately, if someone dies and they don't kind of transfer the ownership of the pet, then I think the pound gets it. Um, which is not the place you want to be as a pet, I'm afraid. Uh, I know they have, they must have pounds. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I don't want to think about it. It's, it's depressing. I do not want to think about the, the, the cat or dog pound. So I will not answer that question. That's the one question I will not answer. <laughs> Sorry, because I don't want to think about like what happens to pets that don't, that, that's sad. So, um, all right, that was kind of, I'm usually pretty positive, but that was a negative. All right, um, okay, that's weak entities. Um, now, roles hardly ever come up, but they do sometimes. Uh, roles. So in roles, what you have, you'll have something like, um, one sec. Um, this is an example of a role. Um, sorry, it seems like my chat is kind of screwed up here. All right. Um, so oh, why, did, why did they do that? Um, this is from the slides. Um, anyways, I'll just do it. This is from the slides. I mean, it's probably not a good, a good example for various reasons, but I'll just do it. Um, you might have something like this. Um, I'll put it in quotes at least. Cause I don't, I mean, I really don't like getting close to these kind of examples because um, I'm married. Because in, in, today, in, in, in today's world, this can actually get you. I mean, just disclaimer, I yeah. these are just, um, I don't know what you want to call these things. Um, but we'll call it that. We'll stick with that, those names uh, for now. I mean, but, but uh, if people have preferences, I, I'll, I'm flexible. I can ch change the names of things. Anyways, um, the idea here then is that that what we have here is, if we just had it like this, we just had, this is again from the, uh, if we had it like this, it winds up be kind of a little bit, and it becomes kind of ambiguous as to what side. You can have these things where they're kind of uh, pointing back to themselves. That, that, that's certainly, you can have a one-to-one -one relationship, which is like this. But the issue is that what you want is you want to, if you're just gonna if you're gonna bring this thing put this thing out to a table, how do you do this as a table? Well, you want you need to name the the attributes. You need to name the sides of the um, so uh, of the um, relationship, the manage one relationship. So you do this with roles. So it's just a, it's just a way to kind of help, kind of to write something down. So you can put like a name on the actual arrow. Okay, that's what an arrow does. But that's what a role does. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it doesn't really come up so often, but, but sometimes you wind up doing that. You wind up having roles. Um, kind of like if I say something, maybe a better example uh, is like, um, how do I say it? Uh, nah, I mean, we'll, we'll stick with that. So that, that was, that was uh, roles are really simple. There's not much more to say about it. Okay, Isa is a little bit, Isa is a bit more complicated though. So Isa, um, so that's like subclasses. All right. So let's let's look at this, this subclass uh, issue. So um, it, certainly you 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 could have something like the following. You'd say something like um, vehicle, all right? And then I say um, uh, owns, and then person. 
uh, by the way, is this ohm? Is that many to many? Or I'm talking about like, we're gonna say vehicles here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that there's only, well, there's two vehicles that we're gonna consider. And that is, um, so this right here, is this this triangle is an isa. Okay, that's what that triangle means, it means isa. Um, there are really only two important vehicle, oops, rather, a boat. Uh, or a car. Sorry about the sloppy doppy. A boat or a car, and um, then then let, let's let's see um, what what's going on here. Okay, uh, let's see here. So uh, when we do this, so so basically this is this whole kind of object oriented. Or it feels kind of object oriented. I mean, you have this notion of having um, you have this notion of having a um, more abstract class or abstract entity of a vehicle that's owned by a person. But then the vehicles can either be uh, boats or cars. If it's a, now both of them have a VIN, a vehicle identification number. Okay, so they both have a key, a VIN. Um, but then a boat of course has um, a, um, uh, uh, what is it called again? A, um, gosh, I'm what are the, uh, a draft, I think? Draft. Uh, and a boat also has maybe like um, motor type. Uh, the draft of the boat is basically how many, um, how many centimeters, to, how much clearance is there under, under the water, right? Uh, it's kind of important. So like um, you might have like a, um, I don't know, like a 90 centimeter draft. Uh, that's pretty common. Um, and then a car is gonna have, well, let's just say car is just that, that's, um, that's fine. Car is gonna have maybe some other things that might, let's say a car actually gets involved with like um, uh, car, uh, yeah. parking. has parking space and then we have parking. All right, so anyway, so so the key things to, to, to notice note here is that we have um, spe specific attributes that are down uh, in the um, sub-relations here. I'm sorry, in the, su the sub-entities. And then we have uh, specific um, uh, uh, Relationships that um, that more specific entities participate in. Let's say that you, I mean that, that you know, you might have another one called. So this is a parking space here. You might have another one for boat, basically saying has a berth. Okay, but but, but they're different. They're different. Um, they're different relationships. Okay, so this is this kind of is a, is a complication that comes up, but this is very very common. So the, the, you know this this will come up in, in kind of how you um, when you model stuff, and you do it via this is a. Um, you do it via this is a triangle, okay? And of course, it's not, you know, there's nothing that says it, it doesn't, um, a car, let's see, um, physical op. I mean, there's nothing that says you can't do this also. Uh, so this is is a, and this might be something like um, physical object. Now that's not a good example. Car uh, is a possession. Okay, um, that's not so great either. But but the point what I'm trying to say here is that you could, in principle, have you you can have many. It's, it, you're not like bound like you would be like in Java or something to have only one parent in the ISA hierarchy. It's it's fully flexible. Okay, just just so that people understand that. Uh, but let's look at this right here. This owns. Uh, is this many to one or one to many or is it many to many? What, what's what what is the what is the, the what kind of relationship is owns here? This is just kind of a quiz for people on on how things work in in Sweden at least. Uh, actually, I'm not sure about that. I don't think so. Um, actually, the good thing about boats, by the way, <laughs> boats are highly unregulated. So that's uh, this right here. The 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 state doesn't know anything about that. Just to be honest, but but anyways, it does know about owning a car. And as it turns out, only this is this is true in Sweden. You cannot have joint ownership of a car. You can only have one person that owns a car. You can't uh, divvy it up. Just so people know. 
Um, if that's the case, then um, uh, exactly. Yeah, a vehicle cannot have many. Yeah, that's right. I can own many, many vehicles. I can own many cars and many boats. And that would be great. But um, the um, any particular boat or car has to be owned by a, a single person. And that strictly speaking, that actually isn't true with boats. Uh, boats are, but anyways, let's just, let's just pretend like it is. This is just a, becomes a private contract. All right. So, anyways, um, if that's the case, uh, uh, then how would how would this this go? Should I put the arrow here, or should I put the arrow there? Should I put the arrow here? Okay. How many people say? Uh, Yes on that. Just vote in the in the chat. I need at least one vote to do it. Or should I put the pointy arrow there? Okay. So this is A or B. How many? I won't do it until somebody until somebody votes. B. B. Good. Well, the B's have it then. I'll do it. I'll I, you know I'll do what I'm told. But, but the bees are also correct here because yeah, a vehicle points to a person. Basically, you take a vehicle, you take a vehicle, and you can determine a person. You take a person, and you can't determine a unique vehicle, right? So think of it that way. I grab a vehicle, and from that vehicle, can I determine a person? Yes. I grab a person from that person. Can I determine a vehicle? No, because I could own the person could own many different vehicles, right? Okay, so that's that's just you know kind of a all right. So well, anyways, we're here. We're here in this in this situation here. So uh, let's just let's just forget about all that, and let's uh, now we can keep this right here. That's fine. Um, forget about that for a minute. So all right, now we want to push a button on it. So we want to actually spell this thing out in terms of tables. All right. Um, now we actually wind up having some choices. And the choices are basically that you can do, you can do this in, there's three different basic methods of how you can wind up doing this. And let us see here, one sec, one sec, one sec. Huh. All right, that doesn't matter, I can do it myself. Uh, three methods. There is the uh, nulls method. There is the ER method. And then there is the object oriented method. The object oriented method, which actually, as it turns out, is bad. <laughs> we'll cover it though, but you don't want to, this, this one's dumb, but it's just, it, but we'll, we're going to cover it in its painful detail just so that we see how it's, it's done. At least. Okay, the nulls method and the ER method. Let's actually start out with the ER method. The ER method is is the following. That is that each of these is going to get a separate table. Okay, so we're going to have a table for vehicle. We're going to have a table for boat. And we're going to have a table for car. All right. But what has to happen for us to to, to do that, um, and then and then for us to get the isas, we're going to have to do joins between them. All right. So for us to do that though, uh, what we have to do is the, do the following. We have to basically say. Car, let's just say that I have a car and I'll, I'll just put something here, I'll say a car has a color. I mean, a boat has a color too, but it's usually white, all right, or blue, <laughs> sorry. Colors have more variation, but anyways, let's just stick with this right here. So when we go to the ER method of representing this is a hierarchy, what we do is we do the following. We say vehicle, uh, VIN number, um, not really, VIN, uh, and then we say boat, all right, boats. Now, we, we actually have to propagate for the, whatever the, the head of the, the top of the ISA hierarchy is, we have to propagate that key all the way down into each of the subtables. Okay, that's just part of the way that this gets defined. So that means that we're gonna have VIN here and it's gonna be a foreign key actually up to there. And then we're gonna have draft and we're gonna have motor type. All right, and likewise with car, uh, we're gonna have um, VIN and we're gonna have color, okay? And the VIN is gonna be a foreign key up to vehicle. Okay, so that's the ER method. Sorry, 
That's the e, this is the ER method. All right, any questions on that? So the issue is this, is that let's say that I have a particular boat, boat, you know, it's, it has a vehicle identification number of 4499. That means that it's going to be both here, 4499 is going to be here, and 4499 is going to be down here with a color of, let's say, white. I'm sorry, it was a boat with a draft of, say, 90 centimeters, a motor type of outboard motor. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, so what happens then is that an instance lives across, lives in, in an instance, a physical instance of a boat is living in two different tables. So for us, let's say that we had, uh, we had up here, I mean, every vehicle has, let's say a weight. All right, that means we're gonna have VIN and weight. If we wanted to get a query where we're gonna basically say, give me the boats that weigh over, give me the, the all the boats that weigh over, um, I don't know, 1200 kilos, uh, then, uh, what we're going to do then is we, we're going to have to do a join uh, to get that out. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So this, that was the ER method. Now let's do the nulls method or the single table method. So in a single table method, what you do is you go to this thing right here and you basically take the whole is a hierarchy and you squash it down. You squash it down into a single table. Let's see if there's a question here. Uh, is Vina key, one second. You know, it's kind of annoying with Zoom because it, it doesn't, is VIN a key in all the relations? Yes, VIN is a key. In this case here, VIN is a key. So sorry about that. So VIN is a key in all these relations here. I, I missed doing that one right there. Okay, so now let's, let's pound. Now in the nulls method, what we do is we wind up pounding the whole thing down, the whole hierarchy. We wound up pounding it down into a single table. And let's just give the table name vehicle. With VIN. Okay, now there's two things we do. One thing what we one thing we do is we basically say we're going to take the attributes of boats here. So we're going to have draft, and we're going to have motor type, and then we're going to have um, the um, uh, color. Sorry, and then we're going to have a um, uh, two at we're going to have two attributes. Now you can do this as a bitmap. This is usually the way you're going to do it. But you say boat question mark car question mark. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Yeah. All right. So these basically are going to be. Now, if I have a boat, so what what we've done here is we've squashed it down um, into one table called vehicle, and then we've taken all the attributes, all the attributes. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I forgot to put weight in. Okay, we take the, all the attributes all over the whole hierarchy, and then we we glom those onto that to the single pounded down relation, and then what we do is we take all the classes. Um, and this one, I, I mean, if we just do this kind of mechanically, I'll just do. I mean, it's kind of stupid, but well, everything's a vehicle, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but basically, you say boat or car. Is it a boat or is it a car? Okay. Now, you're going to. It's kind of be well. Anyways. I mean, well, this actually is a good example. Um, there are amphibious vehicles, which are are based are basically boat cars. So that would just be true. If I have an amphibious vehicle, it would basically okay. Seventy seven. Uh, the weight is they're usually pretty heavy. I think <laughs> two thousand kilos. The draft is ninety centimeters. The motor type is um, definitely inboard. Uh, the color is a, um, usually they're green because they're military. Um, and it's a boat, yes, and it's a car. It's an amphibious vehicle, right? So it's kind of, we kind of got that along for, but, but this is fairly, fairly rare. If I have just like, like let's, let's take my favorite. Uh, I think it's 1100 and it's draft is 90 centimeters and it's got an outboard and it's white and it's the love of my life. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> okay, uh, a false there for call it for a car. It's, it's my boat. So, um, uh, all right. So, but you get the idea. So, um, uh, yeah, this is a boolean. These are the, the the boat and and car are um, are booleans. I put my car in there as well. Anyways, uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, so this is so this is this is the one option. This is one option. This is another option. Okay, let's just cover it for, for, for just just to be stupid. The object oriented. So the, in the object oriented um, approach, if you're strictly you're going to do this as a set of classes, you have to do the kind of you have to compute the um, well, it's the vehicles, and you have the boats and the cars. Basically, you have to form a class hierarchy because remember in, in strict object orientation. An instance can only be a member of one class, all right? Which is, I mean, object orientation. Yeah, I mean, it's got there's some benefits. But I mean, I like object orientation at one level, um, but it's kind of it's not the greatest thing. There was a whole area called object oriented databases, which completely flopped, completely flopped. Um, it uh, there was all this activity, everybody was talking about it, and then they just disappeared because they because they you know it got because of these kind of issues. Uh, all right, so there we have, we have a boat, we have a car, and we have a boat car. So a boat and a car, all right. The problem is if you have a boat, you have a car, and then, and then you have a, um, if you have a boat, you have a car, and then you have a trailer. A trailer, is a trailer a vehicle? Eh, not really, I, although, well, oh, let's say a, a, a camper. Um, which I fight with all my power to not buy a camper, but I want one, but I, I better not. <laughs> okay, car and camper. Um, this is where it gets really stupid because you have to kind of do, do with, with all these things. So a boat and car, we got that. Then we have a boat and camper. It's one of those and one of those. And then we have the boat, car, and camper. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, you know, boat and car. Boat. Okay, so you have to kind of do the full kind of lattice of the, of, the, of the different class possibilities. And then each of these is gonna wind up getting its own table. All right, so when you spell this out to, 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 to relational database, you have to compute, if you, so you have to compute all these possible kind of conjunctions of the classes and each of them is gonna get a table. So it's, it's just nuts, all right? And no one would do that, but it's kind of there is just kind of a, like, a, like a straw man or a punching bag to say that we don't like object oriented databases. All right, so, okay. Um, all right, so, but let's go back to these guys right here because uh, these, these are maybe the more, these are the ones that you, you're really gonna potentially use. So you have two possibilities there then. So. Um, is there, what's a good reason? So which do people prefer? I mean, is there a good reason for both? What's the advantages? What is the advantages to pound everything down to this one guy right here? So we're given this requirement here. We're given this, this requirement here. We have vehicles, we have boats and cars, and we wanna do, you know, do the, the, we have to represent this is a hierarchy. And I'm, I'm saying we have two choices. We can do the ER method or we can do the nulls method. Notice what right here, by the way, I didn't really show it, did I? Uh, I have to kind of add something. Oh, we have color there, sorry. I didn't, color right here. Sorry, with my boat, since color is not, this is just a boat, it's just a boat. So there is no color. So this winds up being null. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. So strictly speaking, when we do it as, when we pound everything down, if it's just a boat, which it is, and not a car, there is no color attribute on boat. So it's going to be null here. All right. Uh, can you show the? Um, all right. So here, let's. I, I, this object oriented. If that, this last one here, let's just dismiss that because that's stupid. We don't want to do. We don't want to have a table called a boat and car and camper. We don't want to have that. We don't want to have to expand out and make all these tables. That's crazy. It's just we don't. We don't want to do it. So we're going to basically reject that offhand. We're going to reject the object oriented method just offhand, all right? So we have a choice now where we can basically do either the ER method where each of the entities in the class hierarchy are gonna get their own table, or we can pound it all down to a single table 
and then represent things with, we have this kind of bitmap way to kind of represent class membership. And then we have null when the attributes don't apply. All right, so this does not apply interpretation of the null. All right, so which one is better? Which, which is better, the ER method or the nulls method? All right, how many people want to do, here's A and here's B. How many people say A is better? Okay, so we got to vote for A. All right, how many people think B is better? Because it's kind of nice just to pound it down. Oh, good, so we got, so there's a difference of opinion here about what are the, the, the pros and cons. Of, uh, of the three different methods. Okay, look, they're both legitimate. Both are legitimate methods to deal with this. Uh, what are the pros and what are the cons? Let's, let's see if we can't do some thinking here and come up with what are the pros and what are the cons of the, all right. So, um, uh, well, let's be positive and just say, what are the pros? All right, so we have the, the ER method and we have the nulls method. Let's make some comments here about this. All right. Um, yeah, space. Uh, normally, I don't really think space is that important. Sorry. I mean, you know, I'm being facetious here, but. Um, Space, yeah, you know, space. It's, it's, it's probably not gonna be that much different, right? But let's, but what is definitely important is speed. That we cannot, we do not doubt. Speed is, is critical. Um, which one's faster? I'm talking about query, querying speed. Which one's faster? Um, so let's say I want to get all the boats that weigh over a certain amount. Give me all the boats that have a draft under a certain amount and who weigh over a certain amount. Um, it's possible that doing these joins is going to wind up taking some extra. Although actually, strictly speaking, these joins aren't that bad because it's like, what kind of join is that going to be? a boat onto the vehicle. That's actually kind of be an easy join, but, but in principle, in principle, uh, in principle, this should be quicker, right? In principle, because you don't have to do a join. So that's kind of a, that's a benefit. So it seems like, let's just say that the nulls method gives us a little bit of speed. Okay, so we get a little speed up that way. Um, what about the um, query complexity? So the query complexity has to do with like, uh, you're gonna have to ask people to, to write, write SQL. That's gonna, you know, if we get back to that same question of like, give me the boats that weigh over a certain amount and have a draft under a certain amount, then they're gonna have to do a join. So it's a, these are simpler. So it's the nulls method is faster, it seems, and simpler to write questions. So is there any advantage to the ER method? Any at all? Well, there is one and it has to do with this right here, this modeling. Okay, so when we model something, if we pound everything down into a single table, let's say that we have this has parking space right here. This has parking space it wants to have a foreign key. So this table right here um, has P space. It wants to have a foreign key that goes into just the car table, right? It's gonna wanna have a foreign key that goes just into the car table. But if we pound everything down in the nulls method, we won't have a way to kind of specify that. And it would have to actually have a foreign key that goes up into the vehicle table, the, the big massive vehicle table. But in doing that, it allows for things to creep in where we give a boat a parking space. So one of the main things is, is that it basically, we lose, um, we lose parts of the model. Oh, 
Okay, and that can be critical. That can that can be a real problem. We we sometimes to keep integrity, we want to keep the, we want to keep uh, aspects of the model there. Okay, there's a there's a comment here. This is a mess. It is. Um, that's a good point. So for speed, yeah, that's 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 actually a really good point. So um, Yante brought up the issue of that. Well, if we wind up having a just a gigantic database, and um, we have, we just want to go through the cars and we don't want to tr trick with all the other types of vehicles, then we can go through, we can iterate through just the, the car table because that's where everything is. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So then, so so this is, the speed thing is not always the case. So it's not not universally. So speed in terms of um, like for like scanning over the whole set of vehicles, you get speed there for that maybe, but then for, without having to do a join, but for something where you're going to be doing a, um, you just want to scan over the, vehicles of a, of a certain type, like car or something, then you might get speed up there. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty fundamental um, decision though, because you can't do both. Or you can maybe partially do both, right? You could take a certain part of your class hierarchy and pound it down into a single relation, and you could then otherwise have the ER method. So you could make it a hybrid, but, you know, it's a choice you're gonna have to make one way or another. I mean, in, you know, even over, parts of an ER diagram, you're going to have to, parts of the class hierarchy, you're going to have to decide, are you going to do it using the knowledge method or are you going to do it um, via ER? So it's a, it's one of those fundamental decisions that have to be made. So I don't know how Irwin does that, but probably have some extra notation to specify how they want it done or something. Because uh, Irwin, yeah, I mean, there's, or it becomes semi-automated and you have to make decisions like design, uh, like representational model decisions as you're, as you're uh, translating down from the ER diagram. All right, so that was the ER diagram. So this is, it's, um, hopefully you guys found some use in that. Um, that's, you need this, so that should be enough for recitation number three now. And then next time we're gonna start talking, we're gonna really kind of delve into some kind of more deeper issues in terms of design, and that has to do with normalization theory. So normalization theory is usually the hardest part of this course, the, more, the most difficult uh, for students. So it's kind of the most mathematical or logical. Um, uh, so be prepared a little bit for that. Uh, but we're going to spend, I think, the next two lectures on normalization theory. So, um, but it's deep. I mean, it's 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 good. It's definitely good to know. So, because again, these design the design issues are really critical. You got to get you want to get good at this kind of stuff because uh, if you you know, the, the design is really it's one of those things where you can make big mistakes or you can make you know you can be a real hero and do do a really good job. So, yeah. uh, recitation three. I think it's going to be in. Yeah, good. Yeah, somebody answered. It's it's on the it's on the um, uh, recitation. If you go to Canberra, you see where the, those dates aren't changing now. Okay, then. So, are there any other questions? Oh, it's published already. So, recitation three is out now on Canberra. Uh, when you say do not lose parts of the models um, in the ER, um, that's right. Yeah, so with ER, if you do a strict ER, then you just have a tighter correspondence with the, with like the foreign keys or like if you have a subclass that's participating in a relationship that other subclasses should not participate in, then you're going to preserve that, that as foreign keys um, in, if you do the ER model, the ER method, and you pound off the tables, then then you have a chance to represent the, represent that distinction in the, in the actual conceptual model uh, via foreign keys, but if you pound it all down to a single table, then you then you can't do that. I mean, you can do it using triggers, and you can always enforce it, but it's kind of not it doesn't come along for free uh, as foreign keys. Okay, so if there are, are not any more questions, I think we'll leave it at that. So I'm just waiting here if if anybody's got a quick question. Speak now. Okay. All right. Great. Well, I'll see you all later then. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.